I just need to start this video by stating I am sorry. I have absolutely no excuse for what I did, and I just hope that you can hold it in your heart to forgive me. Part of me still can't believe that I called the city of Melbourne Melbourne as opposed to, you know, Melbourne. Being serious for a second, I think I spent so much time around Indians that I've picked up a few of their pronunciations. That said, the way Indians say it is so much more intuitive, so perhaps the people of Melbourne could convince city officials to change the pronunciation of their city, or, in refusing to do that, remove a few of the unnecessary vowels. You could always try donating them to Wales, who seem to be short. When I created my video, Trans Protesters Break Gender Critical Fascist, in which I stated it looked like KJ Key Minchel was becoming aware that the majority of people were catching on to her hateful grift, I had no idea of just how right the coming days would prove said statement. It has been an amazing roller coaster of a ride to see what transpired, and there's a lot to cover, so let's jump right into it. But first, I just need to give a content warning for the following. Transmisia, anti-Semitism, violence against women, fascism, white supremacy, intimate partner violence, and police violence. If you like our work, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon. You can also support us by liking, commenting, and sharing this video on social media. Hey there, my name is Ethel Thurston, she, her, they, them, and it's time to talk about what happened in Auckland, Aotearoa. This video follows on from the previous two regarding Ms. Key Minchel, the first on her Melbourne rally and the impact it had on her later Hobart rally, and the second one covering the assault of Senator Lydia Forbes, Victoria's first Aboriginal woman senator and SA survivor, at Ms. Key Minchel's Canberra rally by police and Ms. Key Minchel's security team. We've covered Ms. Key Minchel's ties to various fascists, including convicted wife beater Avi Yemeni, who was also a spokesperson for Ms. Key Minchel's close friend, Tommy Robertson, at one point in time. Avi Yemeni pleaded guilty to both physical assault and malicious communications against his ex wife, a fact Ms. Key Minchel was perfectly fine with when she turned to him to blast mainstream media for commenting on her connections to the far right. So there's a lot going on, and these videos are well worth checking out if you have the time. In the days following open Nazis turning up to reinforce Ms. Key Minchel's Melbourne rally in Australia, Immigration New Zealand announced that it was reconsidering her entry into Aotearoa, leading Ms. Key Minchel to threaten its Prime Minister, Chris Hipkins. This is why Posey Parker, real name Kelly J. Keane, could be turned away at our border. Not because of her views. There is no such thing as non-binary! Or her suggestion that armed men should protect women in bathrooms from trans people. I'm talking about you dads who maybe carry... I think you should start using women's toilets. But she could be turned away because her rally in Melbourne broke out into scuffles. You are the Minister for Women in Education! Trans rights, oh, trans rights now! It attracted skirmishes between her neo-Nazi supporters performing the Hitler salute and trans rights counter-protesters. But Keane is livid. Immigration New Zealand is now reviewing her right to come here. She's threatening legal action and calling out our Prime Minister. I'll tell you what, Chris. Tell you what, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, Chris Hipkins, uh, let me just tell you this. Revoke my visa at your peril. Roll the dice, my friend. I don't think you'll dare to keep me from coming into New Zealand. Hi. Immigration New Zealand can turn someone away if they're considered a risk to security or a threat to public order. Whether someone meets the good character test or not to, to enter New Zealand isn't something that I would get involved in. Yeah, it's probably not a great idea to threaten a politician whilst you're under scrutiny for welcoming open Nazis to your rally. In spite of this, Ms. Key Minchel was ultimately allowed entry into the country, with her first hate rally set to take place in Auckland on the 24th of March. When she turned up, however, her group of gender-critical fascists quickly found themselves surrounded by literally thousands of human rights protesters, with estimates ranging from 2,000 to 5,000, 
who turned up in support of trans people, indigenous people, and women, all of whom are impacted by the promotion of fascism in their home. Many were chanting, others played instruments, some blew air horns, pretty much guaranteeing that nobody could hear a hateful word Ms. Kim Minchul was spewing. At one point, someone from inside Ms. Kim Minchul's own group rushed forward and doused her in tomato juice, a now iconic scene caught on camera. Just glorious. Ms. Kim Minchul was later led away from the scene by police as protesters continued to shower her with water. All she could do was look on in shock at just how quickly her lies had crumbled around her. All because she couldn't distance herself from the open Nazis that turned up to support her efforts to exterminate trans people and force cis women to adhere to archaic gender norms. Ms. Kim Minchul would later announce that she had cancelled her entire Aotearoa tour, flying home back to the UK with her tail firmly between her legs. Sadly, the event wasn't without violence, with Maui Green Party co-leader Marmara Davison being rammed by a motorcyclist as she walked to show her solidarity with other human rights protesters, with some speculating that the aggressor was a member of the Destiny Church biker group that had turned up to support Ms. Kim Minchul. Fellow Green Party member Goris Garriman stated that the group of bikers had been, quote, acting in a threatening way, end quote. This all seems to be supported by what appears to be footage of said biker ramming into who I presume to be Ms. Marima Davidson. Notice how he's got a completely clear area to turn in from a complete standstill, but instead accelerates to ram pedestrians, suggesting that this was a deliberate act of violence targeted at a woman of colour and not an accident. This would make Marmara Davison, the second indigenous woman leader, assaulted on Ms. Key Minchel's behalf within the space of a couple of days. The tomato juice bandit Eliana Rubishkin came forward to the press at the event, giving a rather heartfelt explanation as to why she did what she did and the symbolism behind her choice of ingredient. Tell me what you did today. Uh, I draw a juice, Fuzzy Parker with tomato juice. I drop a little of juice on her. And I want her to know that she, her voice, her words are blood because they are killing our people. So that tomato juice represents the blood of the people that she's promoting to kill. Tell me what it was like getting up there because you had to go quite a long way. Oh, I just, I just came in and I started, they asked me if I'm a rainbow. I said, no, I'm not. I'm not with all that shit. I went inside. They were not thinking that I am a trans person, because I'm intersex and trans, but they can't tell. So I went there and I sit there, I start chatting with them and like following their, you know. And I literally went inside that little house and I, when Posse Parker came, I just took my juice and I dropped it on her. her. What did she do? She opened her mouth like that, like the juice, and all the people that was around her were juice. And I think she, right now she's smelling like tomato juice and she will not forget what happened here. New Zealand needs to stand up in front of the world and say, this is not welcome here. We protect trans people. Trans people in New Zealand are safe. I came here as a refugee from Colombia, and this is my safe space, my safe heaven. I'm not gonna let that be taken away from me because this is my home. I feel safe here. I want to be here and I don't want hate, I don't want Nazis, I don't want that here. I want to be happy because I'm happy with my family. That is one refugee's plea to the world to stand up for both trans and intersex people because a lot of the policies targeting trans people also harm intersex people and I hope the world is listening. Hey, quick update here. On the night of recording this, I came to find out that Eliana Rubishkin has fled New Zealand to Australia and is now on her way to New York. The reason being that police were asking her to turn herself in and she naturally feared being deported back to Colombia. She has since been charged with assault and is apparently raising funds to fight said charges, yet her Twitter account has gone dark. I'll keep an eye out for things and update you all should she re-emerge. I'm just heartbroken that this person had their home taken away from them a second time. This time for standing up to fascism in a manner that is, frankly, still a hell of a lot gentler than it deserves. 
I hope they receive justice and that she can return home in good time. Another thing I wish to comment on is how this shows the importance of white Alucissa allies being the ones to step up at times like these. The burden of police violence shouldn't be placed on a trans and intersex refugee who risks deportation. If it had been a white Alucissette Altororan, whilst not nice, the worst they likely would have faced is a fine, which can be negated via community support. The same is not true of deportation, so again, if you're an ally, ask yourself what you can do for marginalised communities. Of course, it wasn't long before Ms. Kim Minchel took to social media to paint herself as the victim of brutal violence, ignoring how this method of protest, throwing food at fascists, is iconic. Just consider Anita Bryant, who was pie during a television appearance in Iowa 1977, after she ran the Save Our Children campaign to repeal a local ordinance in Miami-Dade County, Florida, that prohibited discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. She, just like Ms. Key Minchel, claimed that the LGBT plus community was recruiting and grooming children, and so she got pied on television. Trans people aren't any more violent than the gay people before us, we're just defending ourselves, a fact noted earlier by Eliana. Quick side note, the Helen Joyce that can be seen here comforting Ms. Key Minchel is the same Helen Joyce who wrote a book promoting the Nazi conspiracy that Jewish billionaires are turning youth trans, and can be seen here standing on the left, smiling as her friend gives a Nazi salute over a desecrated LGBT plus flag. Ms. Key Minchel and her team also started to blame people who had reported on her Nazi supporters for inciting violence, as seen in this retweet of Billy Bragg, sharing the facts that the flag-waving Nazis vocally supported her. Ms. Key Minchel and her team don't seem to have realised that all they did in making this post was expose people to more damning evidence that she was working alongside Nazis, as can be seen in this video, in which said Nazis parrot her lies about trans youth. In this country, we have medical professionals performing double mastectomies on teenage girls. And that is a fact. If you are under 18 years of age, you can have your breast removed. But you cannot get a tattoo. You cannot buy cigarettes. But the government allows young girls to have surgery because they think they were born in the wrong gender. That is the sort of society we live in. That is the sort of society that is provided by our own government. And we are medical professionals. We are supposed to be our best and brightest. We're moving the best. We also have images of key speakers at Ms. Key Mitchell's rally gleefully posing with said open Nazis for photos, showing us how they were more than happy to accept their support on the day, only changing their minds once the world's eye was upon them. It's also worth noting that this issue wasn't limited to Melbourne, with even more open Nazis, this time belonging to Action Zealander, turning up at her Auckland rally to once again support Ms. Key Minchel. They were even allowed inside the bandstand with the rest of her key supporters. However, this time they thankfully found themselves heavily outmatched and with little police support. Point is, if you're at a rally and someone is there waving a Nazi flag and they're not getting their asses kicked, then that's a Nazi rally. 
At the same time as all this, J.K. Rowling took to Twitter to try and scold the people of Aotearoa for standing up to fascists and celebrating when they decided to pack it in and go home, including in this post which is particularly interesting in how this image is being used. You see, whilst Ms. Rowling's framing might lead you to believe that someone grabbed Ms. Key Minchel and even held a knife to her throat, the truth is that the hand belongs to a member of Ms. Key Minchel's security team, and the apparent knife is nothing but a phone held by one of Ms. Key's supporters. Yet said image is being used by her and others to deceptively frame what happened. Ms. Rowling also took to hiding posts by people pointing out the misery that Ms. Key Mitchell brought to Australia and Aotearoa in rallying little Nazis. Ms. Rowling has also yet to comment on the brutal assault of Aboriginal leader and SA survivor Lydia Thorpe on Ms. Key Mitchell's behalf at the Canberra rally. Another tweet that is no longer up is this one, with Rowling stealing a quote from Open Trans Advocate Andrew Edwalken, whilst posting an image that appears to depict a large man roaring down at a smaller woman, with the man circled in red. The implication being that the man is one on the side of human rights activists and is thus silencing women on our behalf. Only problem is, this was another one of Ms. Key Minchel's security team, as seen in video footage from the event, who is screaming down at a woman for supporting trans people. Really not a great day for Ms. Rowling, but it's been fun to see her flounder. The reason Ms. Rowling is fighting so hard on this is because she tethered herself to Ms. Key Minchel long ago, meaning that now Ms. Key Minchel is starting to be defined by the open Nazis who support her, leading your average person to look at her own hate with a little more scrutiny, it looks like the gig is up as far as the public is concerned. They might have been willing to ignore the plethora of evidence brought forward in the past regarding Ms. Key Minchel's anti-Semitic conspiracies, but that's harder to do once they have flag-waving Nazis marching down their street. So all this leaves me with one question. What can we learn from our brothers, sisters, and others in Aotearoa and Australia? How can we take the lessons learnt there and apply them to how we respond to gender-critical fascism in the UK and the US? The first is to stop taking Ms. Key Mitchell's assertions at face value. Far too long has the British, and to a lesser extent, US media, just accepted the various claims made by gender-critical fascists as equally valid if not superior to the evidence-based positions of numerous medical and psychological institutions. Ms. Key Minchel has grown accustomed to being allowed free reign in soft interviews with UK media personalities that she's audibly shaken the moment she encounters any journalist with actual integrity, a fact seen in her pre-Auckland interview with Kim Hill on Radio New Zealand, in which she started barking orders at Miss Hill, who kept asking for names of the billionaire's apparently transing youth, leading to this astonishing moment. And I think it's shameful for anybody, certainly national radio programmes, to suggest that, that we are not allowed to have those spaces. You clearly I don't really understand, don't understand how any woman can do it. You clearly don't understand the function of an interview, but putting that aside... Oh. Miss Hill is right. Kelly J. Key Minchel doesn't understand the function of an actual interview. She's so accustomed to papers giving her an uncritical platform to spew hate that's just vague enough to maintain plausible deniability while still imparting key aspects of her ideology, so for an interviewer to ask follow-up questions that deny her that vagueness infuriates her in the most spectacular way possible. She's forced to pick between either listing the Jewish people she and her associates routinely throw out as evidence of this assertion, strengthening her ties to Nazis, or she has to refuse and attack the person interviewing her, and in this case, she picked the latter. I do have more to say on this interview, and we will likely return to it in its own video. I've already transcribed the parts I want to discuss, but if you want a good example of how a journalist is supposed to investigate a topic, this is a pretty good one, and it's certainly well worth the listen. 
I just hope any UK journalists paying attention do so too, as they have really fallen when it comes to journalistic integrity. What's particularly interesting is the way in which The Guardian, a UK origin paper that's well known for its uncritical support of gender-critical fascist talking points, actually referred to Ms. Key Minchel as an anti-trans activist rather than their usual women's rights campaigner. Now, this wasn't their UK branch, but the name of the article hasn't been edited at their request, suggesting that even the UK team might have realised they've been backing the Trojan horse of fascism. Though perhaps that's a little too optimistic. What's not too optimistic is the continued outpouring of support from trans allies in Aotearoa, with a further 3,000 people turning up at Christchurch and Wellington, two places Ms. Key Mitchell had intended on visiting as part of a now cancelled rally, all to show their support for trans people. It's been truly inspiring to see such an outpouring of support, particularly from those of us in the UK, who are all too used to fascists like Ms. Key Minchel getting her way. After an incredibly rough start to the year, it's something that leaves me feeling at least a little more hopeful for the future. Because this doesn't have to be an Aotearoa-only event. We know that this sort of thing works, we just need our allies in the UK and the US to step up and do their bit, to turn up when needed and make sure to drown out the hate being propagated by Ms. Key Minchel and her gang of gender-critical fascists. If you appreciate what we do here and want to help out, please consider becoming one of our wonderful patrons who make our work possible. On that note, we'd just like to thank the following people. Matthew Kovac, Gert Van Vorst, Hannah Banghart, Marble Wings, Sosh Daniels, Flynn, and Higgins the Seagull. And for myself, Adita and Levi, take care now. <laughs>